Hey guys, this is Joe. I am the Digital Astronomer. Thank you for tuning in to my channel. The other night I got the opportunity to go out and do a little bit of lunar imaging with my Celestron 8-inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescope and my ZWO 533MC Pro camera. I thought it would be a good idea maybe to do a video just to walk through the process that I use in um, processing my pictures. So uh, stick around. I want to walk you through the steps of how to process lunar images captured with a one-shot Keller camera. Okay, before we get into the processing portion of this picture of uh, this video, I want to talk to you a little bit about some tips that I have for getting better lunar images. Um, now, remember, we're shooting with a one-shot Keller camera, so basically, what you're going to do is use a program like SharpCap or uh, SharpCap or Fire Capture, and you're going to capture about a one to two minute, maybe even short as 30 second video of the lunar surface. You're going to shoot something like an AVI file or an SER file. But there's a couple of things you can do to kind of make your imaging go a little bit better. I want to give you five tips. Number one, if you're using an, um, an equatorial mount, make sure that your equatorial mount is balanced. That is going to give you a lot better image, to be very frank. This is something that I ignored a lot in lunar imaging in the past and planetary imaging, but I find that it makes a big difference. Make sure that your RA and your deck are balanced, and that's going to give you a lot better tracking. Another area that will help you also with tracking is to do a rough polar alignment. Now, you don't need to get real super picky about your polar alignment when you're doing lunar or planetary imaging. When I'm doing deep sky imaging, I want to get the uh, sharp cap polar alignment tool out. I want to get it as close to being perfectly polar aligned as I possibly can. I don't need to get that fussy with lunar imaging, but I do need it to be rough. Now, the reason I tell you that is back in the early days of, 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 of my uh, uh, astrophotography hobby, I would just set up my telescope, kind of do a point it at the moon and, and, and hope for the best. And I found that what would happen is the moon would just kind of rapidly move right across the picture. Now, it's okay to have a little bit of movement. It doesn't have to be perfectly polar aligned. But if you take a little bit of time and just use the polar scope, you're going to do much better. If you're using an alt as, try to get it as close to pointed north as you possibly can. In fact, what I've done, I don't have an all as amount anymore, but when I did, I would just line up Polaris in my uh, finder scope, and that seemed to go pretty good. So get it pointed north, get it uh, a rough polar alignment if you can. Third thing, and this is probably the most important tip I can give you is for capture, is to really get fussy about your focus. Now, this is where I'm going to have to advise a little bit for equipment. My suggestion is if you want to do good quality lunar imaging is get an electronic focuser. Uh, the very fact is, is every time you touch your telescope and try to adjust the uh, focus, it's going to bounce all around and it's going to be very frustrating and you're not likely to get real good focus. I have the Celestron electronic focuser on my telescope and it works beautifully. It's easy to install. It took me about 20 minutes to install it and it works perfectly. And what it allows me to do is really tighten up my focus and be and get much, much sharper images. All right. The fifth thing that I would suggest that you do is plan out your night a little bit. Get something like Virtual Moon Atlas, which is a free um, uh, piece of software. You can download it. You can bring up the day and the time that you're going to be imaging, and you can see what's going to be available uh, on the moon. Now, 
it, it may seem counterproductive, but don't shoot on full moon nights. You want to shoot on nights where you've got um, a, a little bit of the shadow of the earth going somewhere through the moon, and you want to shoot near that. You're going to find that those shadows really help you get a nice contrast in the picture. If you're shooting during the full moon, everything's just going to wash out. You're not going to get very good pictures. So you do need to do a little bit of planning. If you do those five things, I think you're, you, you'll, you'll see some improvement in your um, lunar imaging. Okay, now let's go and let's talk about how we process these images. Okay, to process your lunar imaging, you're going to need three pieces of, of software. First of all, you're going to need this program right here called Auto Stacker. And what this is going to do is allow you to take your video file, break it apart into the individual frames, analyze those frames, and then stack the best ones together to form a single um, sharpened image. The th second piece of software you're going to need is this little program here called Registax. Once again, this is a free piece of software, and you're actually only going to use one section of this, the wavelet section, and that is to help us sharpen and to improve the image a little bit more. I'll show that to you in a few moments. And then for the final touches, I use Photoshop. You could also use um, other programs if you wanted to, um, and um, but, but I like to use Photoshop. So those are the three pieces of software that we're going to use. Step number one in this process is to go ahead and stack our images together. Okay, so to do this, what we're going to do is open our capture folder, which is right here. This is the video clip. I'll clip on it, click on it here, and just bring it over to show you. This is the video clip that I captured. And you can see it's kind of wavy um, because of the atmospheric disturbance and things like going, uh, that going through it. This is about a minute long video. Um, and so I'm just going to drag and drop that file over here into open on auto stacker and that's going to open up a preview window here which is going to show me one frame of the this particular video and now what i'm going to do let's just walk through the settings here in auto stacker uh, first of all you'll see image stabilization i've got it set on surface obviously because i'm doing a lunar surface picture i've got improved tracking selected i've left uh, laplace delta um, uh, selected. I never changed that. The noise robustness I've actually increased. Normally it's set at four. This is the normal range. I've set it up one because I have a little bit of noise in this picture. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave this set at local and I'm going to click on analyze. And what this will do is it's going to walk through each and every frame of this video and it's going to give them a quality estimation. So we'll just wait here for a second for this to finish up. Okay, once Auto Stacker runs through this process, it's going to give you a chart that looks like this, this quality graph. These gray lines, these squi gray squiggly lines here, represent each frame in order and a quality estimate. The green line has gone back and taken those and gone from, arranged them from best to last. So you can see here, I'm going to stack about 50% of my um, uh, frames and the, re the way I've selected that is my green line kind of comes down to where it crosses this 50% line is right here at about the 50% mark. So I'm going to come up here and in my frames, now there's a couple of ways I could do this. I could select a certain number of frames. Down here you'll see my total frame numbers for this particular capture with 3,000 frames. I could set this and just go, okay, stack. 1500 and that's a number of frames. I could also set a range. I could do 750 frames, then I could do another stack of let's say a thousand and then I could do a stack of 1500. Each one of these I can arrange and it'll do a, a, a separate stack. Or I can set it by percentages, and this is how I like to do it. I'm going to come in here, and for this, uh, for the sake of this, I'm just going to go 50% of the frames, and I'm going to stack them. Okay, um, and so I've got that. Now I don't sharpen my images in Auto Stacker, and I leave the RGB aligned because I'm going to take care of all of that in Photoshop and Registax. So I'm not going to worry about that. 
I also could come down here and uh, if I wanted to drizzle this image, I could uh, increase the resolution by 1.5 or 3.0 times. I'm not going to do either of those. Okay, so I've got this side set up. Now what I need to do is come in here and set up some alignment points. And fortunately, this is very easy in Auto Stacker, and I simply use the uh, Place AP Grid. I like to pick 48 for my pictures. Again, you can experiment around and see what works best for your particular equipment. Basically, if you get on the 24, that's going to set very small alignment point sizes. That's going to set... Uh, 4,000, 4,600 uh, 4, uh, and 36 alignment points, or you could go up to 200, the largest, and click on place AP grid, and you can see this is just going to give you the places where it's going to select and align up each one of the frames. Now, I'm going to set this at 48. I find that works best for my equipment. Click on place AP grid. Now I am ready to stack. Now I click on stack and I wait a few minutes. Okay, this just finished up and if I come over here and I open the file it created, this is my stacked image. Okay, now what I want to do now is go over to the second step in this process, which is I want to go to Registax and I want to sharpen this stacked image up a little bit. Okay, so let's move on to step number two. Okay, I have taken my uh, file my, that AutoStacker gave me, this file right here, and I've dragged it over into Registax and opened it up. Now what Registax allows me to do is use this wavelet function. I don't use the align or stack functions at all in Registax. Now you can do that if you want to. I find that it's a little bit more difficult than uh, Auto Stacker, and I also find it doesn't do as good of a job. I think you'll like Auto Stacker better for actually stacking your images. But Registax allows me to do some sharpening. And the way that I can do that is to adjust these layers. The way to think of these layers is layer number one uh, represents some of the biggest features in your uh, image, layer number six, the smallest. And so what I want to do is just sort of drag these sliders up. And as I do, you're going to see, let me kind of mark this. See where these little white corners are here? This is the processing area that it's showing. And you can see that when I slide this over, this is kind of where it started out from. And notice what it'll do right here in this center of the picture between these little white uh, lines here. When I slide this over, it's going to sharpen up those details. See how much sharper that looks? If I click on Do All, it will do the whole area for me. And you can see that brings out a lot of details. Now I'm going to pull up layer number two a little bit, layer number three. And I'm kind of dragging these just to where I instinctively know from doing this several times with my equipment what looks best. You can, you can uh, play around with this, adjust the sliders. Let me pull a slider number five up and number six. I will tell you, if you start to see some noise develop in your picture, one thing you could do is on layer one and layer two, increase this denoise section. You can just hit these little arrows to bring it up or down. Most of the noise in your pictures will be on these two layers, layer one and layer two. Okay, so let me click do all. And you can see this is a much, much sharper image. Now basically that's all I do in Registax. You could go over here, you could adjust the brightness, you can uh, adjust the histogram, uh, do some balancing, you know, like RGB uh, balance, that type of stuff. I don't do a lot of that in Registax. I just do all of that in Photoshop. But Registax has this very good job of, of sharpening your images up. And like I said, you can play around with this until you find, you don't want to over sharpen it, but at the same time, this is going to bring out a lot of details. Look how much better you can see this Vallis Alpis, the edges around Plato and these other craters really begin to stand out when you sharpen the image a little bit. Okay, so now once I've clicked Do All, I'm going to go ahead and Save. And what I like to do is at the end of this, I just add a little 
uh, the two letters RS at the end of the, uh, the file name just to know that this is the file that I've run through Registax. Okay, now it's time to go through our third process uh, in Photoshop and we're going to crop this, we're going to bring out the, some details, and we're going to get the color to come out of this picture. Let's go over to Photoshop and our third step. Okay, I've got the Photoshop opened and we're about to go into the final stage of processing our lunar image. This is the image that I just uh, processed in Re uh, Registax and sharpened. I'm going to go ahead and drop it into Photoshop. You'll notice it's a little bit dim, but that's okay. If I go up here, the very first step that I like to do is come to Image and click on Auto Color. And that's immediately going to balance that out just a little bit. Then I'm going to come to Image, Adjustment, Brightness, and I'm going to bring up that brightness a little bit. I don't want to go too far with it, but I'm going to bring the brightness up a little bit. Okay, now I want to go ahead and uh, crop it just a tad. So I'm going to crop the image. If you don't know how to go to crop, just go over here. See this button right here? Click on that, and that will take you to this. Put a little grid around it, and I like to crop off some of those um, stacking aberrations. Okay. Next thing I like to do is go ahead and get some of the noise out. Now, you don't see a lot of noise in this picture, but in the next process if that we're going to do, where we're going to make the saturation come out and bring the color out in this picture a little bit, it will accentuate any noise that's there. So I like to go up to Filter. Go down here to Noise, Reduce Noise, and these are the settings that work pretty good for my equipment. I used to leave the strength at 5, I go to 90% preserve details, reduce color noise by 38%, sharpen details at 39%, and click on OK. And that's going to reduce any noise that's in the picture. And that's just a sort of a preventative stage of having a really noisy picture after I uh, deal with the saturation levels that I'm going to show you here now. <clears throat> okay, you'll see we've got a pretty good looking picture. And if you want just a basic black and white picture, that came out pretty nice. If I want to make the color stand out just a little bit, here's what I can do. Come over here to your background copy and drag it down to this plus sign and just and, and duplicate this this um, uh, this this uh, layer. Now I want to take instead of normal right here, I want to switch this to saturation. I'm going to come up here to image, go to adjustments, hue and saturation, and I'm going to pull up this saturation button here just a little bit. Now what you're going to see is very subtly that starts bringing out a little bit of the brownish red color in some of this lunar soil. Okay, now I'm going to press, press OK. Now I'm going to duplicate this layer again. Now, if I don't want to drag and drop it, I can just uh, uh, right click on it and come up to duplicate layer and that will duplicate the layer for me. Okay, come up to image adjustments, hue and saturation, and I'm going to drag it up a little bit more. Now notice, you're starting to see a little bit more of this brown come out, okay? Now, the key with doing this is not to get crazy. If you go and do this too much, you're going to have a very unusual looking picture and believe me I've done it on a lot of lunar pictures where I just got a little bit crazy with taking the color uh, up just a little bit too much. Now you notice what's happening. We're really starting to see some of this brown stand out. It's very subtle on the surface of the moon. This is not a feature that just you know blows you out. So that's about where I want to stop with this process. Okay, I've brought out a little bit. You can see the contrast here between this gray and some of this whitish, kind of bluish um, uh, 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 
material, and then some of this brown, which is really what, what most of that is, is some of the iron ore and some of the other uh, elements that are that are kind of a rusty kind of a color on the lunar surface. Okay, so I like that. I'm going to go ahead and flatten this. Go to back uh, the background layer, flatten. I'm going to flatten that image out. Now I'll go up here to adjustments, grab the color balance, and here's where I can play just a little bit. If I don't like, if it's a little bit too reddish or a little bit too greenish, I could come in here and I can make some adjustments. I want this color to be very, very subtle in my picture. I don't want it to be just overwhelming. Now again, this is to taste. You do it how you want to, but that's basically how you bring some of the color out on a Keller CMOS um, picture of the lunar surface, okay? And again, you could play with this to taste, uh, as Bob Ross would say, you know, this is this is completely up to you, how much of this you do. Uh, you know, if you want to bring out a little bit more of the yellow, kind of. Okay, I kind of like what it's looking like right there. Okay, so again, I'm going to flatten this. Now, the only other thing I'm going to do is come up here to the filter and go to Camera Raw. And I love Camera Raw, by the way. Camera Raw is one of the best features in Photoshop. And now if I want to just do a little bit of final touch-ups, maybe I'll go over here to the Detail section, and I'll bring out, and I'm going to sharpen this just a tad bit more. Again, you don't want to overdo it, but... I can see some of the details here and some of these very subtle details popping out a little bit. I could come over here to uh, the basic uh, um, section here in uh, Camera Raw. I might drop, let me see what happens if I drop some of the highlights down a little bit. If I drop the highlights, no, I think I'm going to actually increase them just a tad. Maybe drop a little bit of the whites down. Let's see here. Maybe darken some of the shadows up just a little bit. And overall, I like that. So I'm going to go ahead and press on OK. And there is our final image. Now let's look what happened here. This was our original stacked image of the moon. This came right out of Auto Stacker. We took, what, about 1,500 frames, I guess, and stacked them together, and this is what we got. We sharpened that image in Registax, and we went from this to this. Now, with a little bit of work in Photoshop, we went from this to this. And so that's just uh, one example of how you can do lunar processing. All right, I'm going to show you a few other images here that I captured on that same night. Some of them are in color, some of them are not. And uh, just to let you see them, I hope this helped you. Uh, if you'd like to, if you've got other tips or suggestions about how I could improve this process, please put them in the comment section. I'd love to hear about them and would love to see some of the images that you've taken as well. All right, thanks for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you get out there under the night sky and take some beautiful images of our nearest neighbor, the moon. Tune in net next time. If you, if you like this video and it was helpful, please do me a favor. Click on subscribe and share it with your friends. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.